It's finally happening. You can finally use your iOS device, iPhone or iPad. I have iPad Pro here because I'm not paying for an iPhone. As a webcam, you can use it as a direct webcam. And I'm not talking about all of those different apps that allow you to stream it over your network, over Wi-Fi to your computer and have a ton of latency and some weird desync issues and stuff. I've been trying to navigate that area to make a video about it, but I've just been so unhappy with the results, both on Android and iOS that I haven't really gotten around to making such a video because I don't know that they're great solutions for everybody. This, however, does seem to be a pretty solid solution. This is what we've been waiting for, and I really hope it comes to Android soon. We're going to talk about it right after this. Nerd or Die, as is the sponsor for every stream. Nerd or Die specifically, though, they have just updated their Clearview stream package, which is one of their more popular stream packages. It's now Clearview V2. And they've completely revamped the entire stream pack. If you already have it, like if you already bought it, then you get the entire update for free, which is pretty cool. But if not, of course, pick it up at my link in the video description. It is eposvox.gg slash nerd or die. Uh, but they've completely revamped the stream pack. Uh, free updates for existing owners. They have a new, newly designed goal, event list, and chat widgets, which you can view through these things. The alerts are completely customizable now instead of being just static uh, WebM widgets. They've got new sound effects, new color schemes, all of that pretty cool stuff here and it's currently on sale and you can save 15 percent with coupon code eposvox so bam there you go i'm eposvox your stream professor and if you use the app filmic pro on ios which is available for 15 dollars, unfortunately not free but they do a lot of work on this app and for this kind of feature not everything in life can be free if you use the Filmic Pro app, you can actually use your iOS device with clean HDMI out direct from the camera. I mean, it's not technically direct because you're going from the camera sensor to that app and then out HDMI, but it's as direct as you could get. And it's what I've wanted mobile camera apps to add to phones for a long time. It's just a direct feed it out the USB port. It's finally happening. This is specifically only in Filmic Pro and only on iOS at the moment, but it will work with iPhone or iPad. So if you haven't already, go ahead and update your app. Next, we're gonna go ahead and open up Filmic Pro. This is Filmic Pro. If you haven't seen it or used it before, here you go. <laughs> it is a wonderful app for capturing from your mobile cameras. It gives you a ton of options. So under here, we have, over here we have focus and shutter speed controls. We have color adjusting controls. They have some default just like better than you'd expect looks that they apply to the stuff then they if you go under here under settings you can specify your resolution your frame rate which preset and quality you run it as in terms of processing the image sensor you can choose different aspect ratios depending on what kind of content you're producing all of that you can choose your frame rate for 4k the rear cameras on the ipad pro go from 30 to 60. you can actually choose between the normal wide camera view, since I'm on an iPad Pro, I have a bunch of cameras, the ultra wide, which of course does run at a lower resolution, the zoom camera mode, the selfie camera mode. Hey, hi, how's it going? I'm very blown out here. We will have to adjust some settings here. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll pull up these settings. All right, we got a shutter speed of one over 60. We do not want that. Oh, we can adjust ISO as well, but I want to adjust shutter speed. That's a reasonably exposed image. It's going to look a little bit watched out in this capture due to the tone mapping, but we're good to go. So we can customize our settings. We can switch cameras. They also have a, a double take version, which shows both cameras at once. We have to enable permission. Now we can show both cameras, but this will not allow us to do the HDMI out as cool as it is. It is a really cool feature. We can't use that here, so we're going to have to go back. So let's say we want the selfie camera. We got it set up. It's nice and exposed here. You could flip this around and use your rear settings. To get it to run over HDMI out is actually fairly simple. You click hardware and you click toggle HDMI out. Here they also have options available for uh, using the anamorphic adapters from, I believe it's motion? No, I'm forgetting the name, moment, moment. So you can toggle anamorphic adapters for lenses you're adding on, but we're just gonna click clean HDMI out and it's gonna require me to unplug and replug the HDMI dongle. Okay. Now there was also an option available to use the audio over HDMI out as well. I disabled that because I want to use my actual microphone setup here. You can see here we have relatively low latency watch, you know, compared to even just the regular camera here. If I switch back, we have relatively low latency 
clean HDMI out with full control over the settings here in the iOS app. Now, I have not yet synced the audio from what I was recording from before with my main camera to this. So I'm gonna do a clap and we're gonna see how much latency there is compared to my normal camera capture card, which are both running through the same capture card, just different sources. Now, it's probably gonna be pretty close and if it's a few frames off, that's just because my camera outputs at a different latency than the iPad, but from what I can tell, it is pretty low latency. Now, we still have full control over the camera, so if I wanted to get crazy, I could sit here and crank up ISO, completely blow myself out, turn it back down, get nice little exposure here. I can zoom in and out, so I can be like, Wah! I can change focus, I can even switch the cameras up. So if I'm, you know, using this for a stream, I can still pick it up if I want to show you something on my desk, I can still pick it up, switch cameras here, go to wide mode, and be like, y'all see this stuff on my desk? And I can even change the resolution out. So the selfie camera defaults to 1080p, but for the rear cameras, I can kick it up to 4K. Not that you're really gonna notice the difference through this, especially on a video, especially for a stream, but we can do that. And then we can go back and keep changing all of these settings if we like. So we have it at 4K, 30, we can crank up ISO, turn it down a bit, get a little bit less noise in this image, get a little bit, there we go. That's actually looking pretty nice. And I can be like, hey guys, real quick, just wanted to show you I picked up Gauntlet Legends on PS1, sick game, go play it. All right, there we go. That's a nice little look. Maybe get yourself, you know, use a color chart, get yourself a little LUT developed on top of it. Maybe I'll show you what I can do with that in an, a clip at the end here. And then I can just go in and I can switch back or I can just flip this around and use this as a reverse selfie camera of sorts, assuming I don't disconnect the USB. Uh, the USB-C port on the iPad can be pretty sensitive, oh hi, uh, to getting wiggled around and end up, uh, you know, cutting out the signal a little bit. Although it seems to be more stable with this clean HDMI out mode than with the normal screen capture mode. And obviously I would want this like propped up on some boxes here. But here we have it running at native 4K into the 4K video capture. Looking pretty good. And like I said, I will, the exposure is actually pretty nice here. So I'll throw on a little LUT and show you what I can work with a little editing magic and then just apply that as a filter in OBS, assuming I'm using the same settings every time. And wham, I'm using my iPad Pro as a 4K webcam for streaming, for vlogging, for whatever. Now I am using, actually I'm gonna switch back to my main camera now. Now for all of this, I am using the official uh, Apple USB-C to HDMI dongle for my iPad Pro and you would need to choose the lightning one or whatever the one for your phone is. Now when I picked up these dongles, a lot of people in my original iPad Pro video were like super critical of the choice to get the first party one saying you can get cheaper third party, blah, blah, blah. And that is the case, I have used third party, just normal USB-C to HDMI dongles that I have used on my Android phones with the iPad Pro. The official one, however, comes with an extra USB port for connectivity to the iPad for whatever you're doing. And it comes with a secondary USB-C port to feed power into the iPad. And if you are doing a lengthy stream or a lengthy vlog or really anything with this HDMI connection, you kinda wanna run the power into it as well. That way your battery stays charged and your camera doesn't die on you midstream. So I would, recommend sticking with that. But other than that, Filmic Pro just gave you the option to use your iPad, probably most of the recent iPads and iPhones because they all had video out to some degree or your iPhone as a freaking webcam. Now, what I would love to do, see, especially with their double take, and this is not at all their specialty, but I would love to see them do the same thing, but let you do face cam over top of your screen. If you wanted to stream what's on your iPad, if you could do the double take with your normal screen view, like it, it doesn't even have to capture your screen because it can just put your webcam, your, your camera view, like in the top third of the screen or you control where it goes, then the normal display out would pass through to your capture card and you'd be good to go. Pretty cool. Again, it's 15 bucks, sucks that it's not free. Nothing I can do about that. It is a great option though. Like I said, I have been for almost a year now looking into the various options for both Android and iOS to stream your phone's camera over Wi-Fi or over USB even. And the results just have so many issues, so many quirks, and vary so drastically from phone to phone. 
that I haven't really found a solution that I've been set in. So something that literally give, treats it like a camera's HDMI output gets a huge plus for me. Hope you enjoyed today's stream, guys. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe for more tech education. I'm Eposvox, Vox, your stream professor. I'll see you next time. Join us on Discord for some free streaming resources. Eposvox.gg slash Discord.